Hi, I'm Matthew, the PhD student in the Strontium Laboratory of the Quantum Light and Matter Group at Durham University. I'm going to be talking to you about a fully funded PhD position available in our lab. Our group is working towards developing the next generation of atomic clocks where individual atoms are trapped in an array of optical tweezers. By mixing in a bit of a high-end rid booster into the clock transition, interactions can then be added between the atoms and a spin squeezing protocol will then be used to improve atomic clocks beyond the quantum projection noise limit. Now I'm going to give you a quick preview of the lab, where you'll be doing your PhD, and explain how our experiment works. In order to make an atomic clock, you need lots of lasers and optics, which live on the enclosed optical table shown here in our main lab. For a concrete example of that, here is our blue 461 nanometer laser in the bottom left-hand corner, and we can use a series of lenses, mirrors, beam splitters, and AOMs to control the shape and frequency of our light as it's sent to its multiple different applications. There are many other lasers in our lab here, such as here, the 689 nanometer red laser, which is locked to the ultra stable cylindrical cavity in the bottom right of the image, so we can still have a nice stable laser. This floor is the heart of our experiment, the vacuum chamber, where all of our physics is done. So our strontium atoms start on the right hand side of the image in the tinfoil wrapped strontium oven at 700 Kelvin. They then travel from right to left down the tube and enter the main vacuum chamber where we then have 14 viewports to send in all of our different lasers from across the lab to cool, track, control and image our atoms. Taking away all that XX optics and just looking at the core diagram, the atoms start at 700 Kelvin, traveling down the tube towards the vacuum chamber. A counter propagating laser beam is used, uses photon recoil to slow the atoms down to a more reasonable speed where once it's in the centre of the vacuum chamber, six orthogonal laser beams and a magnetic field gradient are used to form a MOT or magneto-optical trap. This traps and cools the atoms down to about 5 millikelvin. And one of the really nice things about our experiment is you can actually see this by holding up a phone camera to the viewport, which is the image shown in the bottom left, where we have tens of millions of atoms trapped in the cloud. Using a narrow line with red transition, we can then form a red mot, which is even colder at temperatures of less than a microkelvin. Once we have our cloud of cold atoms, we can then use optical tweezers to pick out individual atoms. An optical tweezer is a tightly focused laser beam down to about a micron in size, where atoms are attracted to the high intensity point of the focus. Here we have a single atom image showing one atom in a single tweezer on a single pixel of our photon counter but using a device called a spatial light modulator, we can create holograms that give us 3D arbitrary trap arrays, where here we show an example of a 2D image of the Durham University logo. But with an arbitrary 3D array of single atoms, there's only a wealth of physics that you can do with that. In particular, in our group, we're interested in making atomic clocks. So for this, we have a bespoke state-of-the-art one hertz line with clock laser. Here we can then form an atomic clock in our experiments, which would be a lot of what you'll be doing in your PhD. And then by dressing using our Rydberg UV laser to slightly dress the clock transition at 6 to 8, we can then do our spin squeezing protocols and try to improve atomic clocks further. To help with this, we also have a frequency comb lab, which we use to make state of the art precision measurements and we also have many other facilities provided as part of being in Durham's quantum light and matter group. If this sounds interesting to you or you'd like to find out more, please do contact us with the email addresses shown there. And thank you for listening.